Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the zero waste things I regret buying. So over the past few years, since trying to lead a more sustainable lifestyle, uh, my shopping habits have changed a bit to try and support living more eco-friendly. Uh, so I have bought a few items uh, that I genuinely love and that are very supportive of my new way of living. Uh, and there have also been mistakes in there and I feel like a lot of people, including myself, often talk about the things that we love, which is great and that's going to be part two to this um, video as well and the next video will be um, the things that I love. But I wanted to first start out with the things that um, weren't so great and haven't been that wonderful and I regret spending my money on because uh, hopefully it can help you to realise that a lot of things aren't necessary. You don't need to buy new things to live more eco-friendly. Um, in fact, that kind of goes against eco-friendliness as a whole. <laughs> um, we need to just use what we already have. Um, but I didn't know that going in, I was a little bit more naive and unaware of a lot of the stuff I've learned along the way. I feel like I'm rambling. I'm just going to get into it. Um, so the first thing that I regret buying is straws. And I feel like this is a super common one. For some reason, even though I don't remember ever using a straw before of any kind, going zero waste, all of a sudden there's these bamboo and glass and stainless steel straws on the market. And I feel, feel like, oh, they're really eco-friendly. I must have one. But they don't serve a purpose. They're not replacing something in my life that wasn't eco-friendly. In fact, it's more eco-friendly just to not use them at all. I feel like they are great for people who do use them and want an eco-friendly alternative, something that's reusable rather than disposable or made out of plastic. But for me and other people who don't need a straw and who um, haven't used one, don't need it. Complete waste of money and I regret buying. Saying that, I do have a couple that I use because I have them and I just feel like if I have them I'll use them but most of them I've either given as given away to people who did want them um, or I have traded them on the buns app or I just wanted to you know I wanted to give them a life cycle I didn't want to throw them away but I also wasn't using them but I, re I really don't recommend going out and buying them um, if you if you just don't use a straw anyway so that's my first one secondly is um, like Kilner or Mason jars. Again, this is something that I could have just upcycled. So um, one of the first things I bought when I was looking to lead more of an eco-friendly life were these glass jars that I bought online um, to store things that I was going to buy in bulk. And that's great. Um, however, I already have things, like if I had just looked in my fridge or my pantry, I probably would have found jars that were already there that I could have just waited to use up, rinse out and then use those. And that's what I do now. Anytime I need a jar, I'll just use an old olive jar or um, pickle jar or something really big. And they're about the same size or as something smaller from like a chutney or something. And you can have like a range of sizes. That's what I do now. Maybe it's not perfectly Pinterest aesthetics, but it's definitely more eco-friendly. And I really didn't need to buy glass jars when I was already technically buying them with food in them and I could have just waited to use that up and and then use the jar and that's what I do now. In fact, there's, I have such an overabundance of those kind of jars because I do buy things in jars fairly frequently that I give them to um, local like, zero waste shops so that other people when they come in they can use those jars rather than um, using a brown paper bag or um, having to go out and buy their own or not being able to buy something loose because they didn't bring something with them. So. Uh, if you have too many jars, that's a little tip to donate them to um, a local bulk shop. The third thing I regret buying is shampoo bars. Not that there's anything inherently wrong with shampoo bars per se, but I went through a phase, if you remember, if you're like a long-term subscriber, I went through a series of trying to do low poo or water only. Um, washing of my hair, that is. That means like not using shampoo. Um, and I wanted to, 
I, f I felt like shampoo and conditioner was where I where there was like the majority of my plastic and I wasn't sure where there was going to be an alternative so like food I was just going to buy it loose whereas shampoo I didn't know how to buy it loose unless it was a shampoo bar however most of these are made with soap nuts and lots of oils and they just left my hair feeling really greasy oily and they had this like tacky film on it and not just like a little bit like my hair looked like it was coated in candle wax after I washed no matter what I did I did vinegar rinses I did um, I rinsed it I did scratching preening I did it all and it just it wasn't working for me um, but I went through a lot of shampoo bars without actually using them up because I just couldn't I couldn't use them it just wasn't working for me I was not going to use them again so I regret going through so many I was determined to make it work for me but it just wasn't and I wasn't giving in and I should have just stopped way sooner um, now what I do for my shampoo is my local zero waste bulk shop stocks shampoo and I go and take my own glass pump and fill it up there so that's a really good option for me I understand that that's not accessible for everybody that's what I'm currently doing with my shampoo situation and I don't know what I would do if I didn't have that shop. Um, probably look for a more eco-friendly shampoo. Um, but yeah, so many shampoo bars just, I went through all of them. There was one that was like pretty decent that my friend gave me, but it was not from the UK and they don't sell it here so I'd have to get it shipped. And for me that's just counteracting the good that would be d done from like not having it packaged because I still have to get it shipped over which would not be the most eco-friendly option. So for now, I'm sticking with refilling, using good old liquid shampoo. It's working for me at the moment. I dread the day where I move or like there's no longer a zero waste shop that stocks it near me, but hopefully that'll become the norm and I will forever be able to buy shampoo zero waste. The fourth thing is thrifted clothes that I do not love. I can get into, um, Kind of this optimistic mindset where I can go into a thrift shop and I'll be like, oh my god, it's so cheap, everything's so wicked friendly, it's second hand, everything's up for grabs, and I'll just get something, I'll be like, that's so super cute, I'll I'll buy that. Um, which is not great, and it's actually harmed my like minimalism because if that bit harmed my minimalism, I don't know what I'm talking about. Basically, um, I started hoarding clothes again because I'm like they're second hand and they're really cheap because I thrifted them so why not um, but then I had a load of clothes that I don't actually really love um, and it became quite frustrating um, it's not actually that eco-friendly to hoard a load of clothes if you're not using them one somebody else may have like truly loved it and bought it two I'm taking away um, the clothes from people who actually can't afford to buy anything else other than secondhand clothes. So I'm stealing from the community who actually shop there out of necessity, not just from um, like a green aesthetic. Um, and three, a lot of clothes in charity shops are made with like plastic fibers. They're not necessarily always cotton or hemp. In fact, those are pretty difficult to find. So when I wash those clothes, they're still polluting um, by the microplastics that come off them through every wash. So it's not necessarily the most green thing. The best thing to do wardrobe wise is to downsize and just have what you need and which I am going through another like decluttering at the moment, sending things back to the thrift shop that I bought there originally and um, just using what I need because that, that, was, that was a big mistake. And still something I am trying to learn to not just grab things because it's secondhand and affordable. The fifth and last thing is books that I otherwise could have just borrowed from a friend, family member, the library. Um, I don't need to buy books. Often I get them shipped so I order them online. Secondhand always because it's so much cheaper. I've done that since having to buy university books just found it so much cheaper to buy um, secondhand books online but still I'm getting them shipped and then I'm owning them and then they're taking up space and I don't need to and I'm looking to go through all the books that I've read and I'm not longer I'm no longer reading and giving them to people so that we can spread the love and spread the knowledge and spread the stories and um, I don't really need to buy any books anymore I have enough books that I already just like can't wait to read all the books that I have um, 
and they just take up loads of room and when there is another book that I want to read I'll just rent it from my local library or I'll ask a friend if I can borrow it because usually books come the books that I want to read have come with a recommendation so I'll just ask that friend if I could borrow that book and that's a much more eco-friendly way to um, read <laughs> so those have been five zero waste things that I regret buying. Uh, I hope this video has helped you and um, given you inspiration to just not go out and buy things just because they're like an eco-friendly alternative to something else. Ask yourself whether you actually need them, whether you love them, and um, let me know in the comments if this video was helpful and some things that you regret buying since living more sustainably as well and we can share in the comments and help inspire other people to reduce. I think that's all. If you haven't subscribed and you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.